Welcome back to another video on my channel. The first one in a long, long time. But don't worry because consistency is arriving. But anyway, in this video, I'm going to be recasting five main Spider-Man villains. This is part one of a two-part video, and if you want to see part two, then please leave a like. Let's try and hit 10 likes. I've seen many other YouTubers do this video idea, so I decided to do it myself. So please enjoy this video and tell me your opinions in the comments, because I love chatting and debating with you guys. Without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Enjoy. Okay, so for the first villain on this list, we have a foe from Spider-Man's earlier years, and his name is Michael Morbius. Dr. Michael Morbius was a scientist with a disfiguring blood disease. As have many other mad geniuses, he attempted to cure himself with science, and then he ended up a vampire with super strength, with the power of flight and healing abilities. He does become more of an edgy hero than a villain, but still, I'm a count him on the list. So with my version of Morbius, I wanted to go more of a young look than an old look, so that most comic book viewers can relate to the character more. Now I know Jared Leto is the live action Morbius currently, but I wanted this to be more interesting so I'm going to challenge myself to think of a different actor so it's more challenging for me and more interesting for you. So that is why I've chosen Wes Bentley as my Michael Morbius. I feel like he really looks like a live action Michael Morbius and I think he could pull off the role really well. I think this could be a bit of a redemption from Ghost Rider and I'd definitely like to see him in a big screen Morbius movie. So that is why I've chosen Wes Bentley as Michael Morbius, the living vampire. Next up on the list we have one of Spidey's more well known foes and that is the Lizard. His real name is Dr. Kurt Connors and he's a scientist that works specially with reptiles. He subjects himself to his own experiments, hoping to become the first human with reptile-like regenerative abilities. But the unintended result is that he turns into a real lizard. Now, if we were going to do a film solely on the lizard, I'd like to focus a lot on the kind of two sides of him. So I'd want an actor that can play a good sympathetic scientist, Dr. Kurt Connors, but I'd also want someone who can pull off the villainous side as a CGI lizard. So that is why I have gone with Aidan Gillen, a decently renowned actor who I think could really pull off being the lizard. I've seen him play a very villainous role in Death Runner, The Maze Cure. What? Maze Runner the Death Cure, and that's why I think he'd be a very good lizard, but then also I think he has the potential to show a sympathetic side, so that we can really feel for the character. But that is why I have chosen Aidan Gillen as the lizard. Next up on our list we have the Kingpin, or Wilson Fisk. He is one of the most ruthless crime bosses in all of New York, and he will sacrifice anything and anyone to get whatever he wants. He lacks any superpowers, but is extremely physically strong, and familiar with many martial arts styles. Now I've watched the entirety of the show Daredevil, and I loved it so much. I think Vincent D'Onofrio's performance as Kingpin was literally perfect. But, as I said, I want to make this more challenging for me and more interesting for you, so I'm going to try and find another actor, even though I don't think there should be. Marvel decides to bring him into the MCU, I really want Vincent D'Onofrio, because he literally is the kingpin. But if I was going to choose another one, I would go for Michael Chiklis. You might know him from the Fantastic Four 2005, where he plays The Thing, which obviously is a bit of a campy movie, but I think he can play a serious role as the biggest crime boss in New York City. Now, if you're like me and you've watched the show Gotham, you've seen him play Captain Nathaniel Barnes, a very serious police captain. And that kind of shows you the potential he has as Kingpin. He also has quite the aesthetic for it, obviously not being as big, but I feel like they could do something with that. And I feel like he'd suit the role. So that is why I've chosen Michael Chiklis as the Kingpin. For the third villain on my list, we have Mysterio, or Quentin Beck. Now, Quentin Beck was fired from the film business, but with his knowledge of special effects and certain devices, he began his life of crime and began a rivalry with him in Spider-Man. He often uses gas-type drugs against his opponents and creates illusions to confuse his enemies. Now, I think Jake Gyllenhaal did an amazing performance in Spider-Man Far From Home as Mysterio, but like I said again, we're going to try and find a new actor to make this more interesting for you. I did really struggle with this one because I think Jake Gyllenhaal did such a good performance, but I did end up picking Christoph Waltz. Now, I've seen Christoph Waltz in a few things, but I really wanted to choose an actor with a mysterious side, and he clearly shows that as he plays the villain in Spectre from the James Bond franchise. And I feel like he really could be a deceiving Mysterio. So that's why I've chosen Christoph Waltz as Mysterio. Now for the final villain on this list, we have Doc Ock. Now if you ask a non-comic book fan to name a Spider-Man villain, this probably is the first one that comes to their mind because he's that well-renowned. And in this storyline, I want it to be an old Doc Ock who is losing functionality in their limbs. So he creates the mechanical arms and dawns the Doc Ock status. The full mechanical arms are grafted onto his back and he controls them with lethal precision and has a hatred for Spider-Man. Now again, this is one that I really, really struggled with because I couldn't really find any actors who I think would suit him other than the original Alfred Molina. I thought of people like Javier Bardem, whose voice I think would really suit him. I also thought of Mark Hamill because I really thought he could portray the role well, but eventually I ended up with a conclusion that might just surprise you. I chose Rain Wilson as Doc Ock. You might know him from his role as Dwight Schrute in The Office, who is obviously a very comical character, but I really feel like his acting has a lot more potential, and I feel like he could portray this villain very well. I'd definitely like to see the descent from a nice scientist to crazy Doc Ock. And I think with a shave and a haircut, he could have the look as well. So that is why I've chosen Rain Wilson as Doc Ock. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you did enjoy it, then please leave a like and subscribe. 
and please comment down below your opinions. I love chatting with you and debating with you in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to my podcast. 10 likes and I'll make a part two. And love you all. Stay safe and peace out.